then you would start to see the smaller baby shrimp at that food and they're not getting run off or beaten up or bullied and shoved away, you know, and only have to feed on, you know, uh, algae or, you know, uh, biofilm or, you know, anything like that. So, you know, Dennerly sells the shrimp baby. Well, when you put shrimp baby in there, and the minute it touches the water, it disperses like just like oil, water and oil. It just disperses. And their thing is, uh, the reason they do that is so it'll disperse throughout the whole tank. So it doesn't matter where a baby's at, that 99, let's say 99% of all living, you know, shrimp, everything in the tank will be able to get a piece of food. Due to the fact of how it disperses itself. It's a real pretty blue, that little one. So, I started thinking, hmm, well, what do I, you know, what what can I do so I'm not, you know, spending, you know, so much money, you know, on Dennerly. Even though, you know, I have a, t a ton of their products, you know, but, uh, um... So what I started doing is, you guys know I like to use bug bites. Well, the bug bites that I have, some of the bug bites that I have, you know, it's the small granules. And e even the tetra uh, uh, granules. I grind it up in my fingertips. And I grind it, you know, from like left to right in the tank. And I powder the top of it. I don't over powder it, but I get it from left to right. I grind it back and forth and then I stop. And then I close the lid. Now I go to the next tank, grind it across, stop close the lid or if the tank has a lid and uh, I continue like that so now what I've come to see is uh, all the shrimp are growing they're all like growing at the same speed now so all the little ones aren't little anymore they're all starting you know they're all within the same uh, size range you know as as the other ones do the fact that I'm feeding the tank and not just the corner. And you don't have 47 snails on it that are eating everything. Uh, and then the shrimp have to fight with the snails. Now, here's another fact that I read. The less you feed, if you overfeed, then you're feeding the snails. If you underfeed or feed the tank properly then the snails will actually control their own uh, amounts that they, you know, their offspring and how much they breed. <coughs> I mean, snails will die because there's not enough to su sustain, you know, the whole colony. So my tanks have, have literally, because I cannot stand those pond snails. Well, one day they got in here and I've just traipsed them to every single tank because I move plants. I do this. I do that. I'll start up another tank and I'll put the pond snails in the new tank because, you know, snails are good. You know, shrimp like their poop. And, you know, it gets good bacteria going, all that stuff. So due to the fact that I have so many, I just use them and transfer them over. Okay, big deal. So what I did since I started feeding differently, they're dying off. I mean, literally, I'm at like 90% die off. They're just, I mean, my tanks are clean. They used to be able to look at my tanks and see massive snails. With the whole bottom's almost completely clear. There's one. <coughs> I think there's one way back there on the bottom. You have two. So let's say, let's say I can't see none. So three, four, five. Yeah, let's get real close like this so you guys can all see. They don't, you know. I used to have them bad, but they're just gone. There's one way in there. But 90% of all my snails are gone now due to the fact, and I got a couple on the glass, due to the fact that uh, I don't overfeed anymore crushing the food up and sprinkling it across the top like the Dennerly shrimp baby has dropped my snail production down to, you know, like uh, a tenth of what it used to be. 
and the thing is, is some of my bad tanks, you know, that had really bad snails are starting to catch up now to where there's nothing. I mean, I have tanks that have dead carcasses in them because there's nothing in there that I could feed them because when I crush the food up, it disperses. The shrimp are all eating those small little granulars of food now, and it's uh, making the area uh, super clean. They're cleaning the whole tank. You know, there's not a big, huge clump of food here in the corner feeding, you know, 80, 80 snails, and then they go and, and uh, lay eggs, poop eggs all over your tank, and then you got thousands of new snails in 30 days, and you're like, oh my gosh. And you got more snails than you do shrimp. I mean, look, I know snails are good for the tank, you know, because they burrow down, they do this, they do that. But, you know, being overrun by snails, I mean, it doesn't look good. It doesn't hurt the shrimp. It doesn't hurt your tank, but it looks crappy. You know, it just does. I don't, I don't keep shrimp to keep snails. I keep shrimp to keep shrimp. Now, having some snails in there to do a job and, you know, create a good habitat okay fine <laughs> but i'm not raising snails i mean unless it's my uh, rabbit snails yeah i'm not raising pond snails so the sooner they die off hey i'll be way better you know so that's that was the third thing i wanted to bring up i'm not trying to talk and you know uh uh you know drag on and this and that but it's three things that i thought that are super uh Important to know, the Pancir C, uh, just one of those little itty-bitty uh, coffee stirs, McDonald's coffee stirs. Um, they say uh, it will kill snails, but at the small amounts you need to kill planaria, uh, I haven't noticed any snails dying except for me cutting back on the food. So I do one dose. They say, you know, do up to three doses. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I probably go whew, every other day to two days. Uh, but do a water change in between. That's just my opinion. Or wait, yeah, do every two to three days, but do a 10% water change and then put another dose in. Because you don't want to, you know, it's going to be killing planaria as it's going. So you don't want any ammonia in there, in my opinion, whatsoever. Because if it's building up over days and days and days because you choose to do it three times uh, and you're not giving them fresh water, then there's a great possibility that you're going to lose some shrimp. So if you do it every two to three days... Uh, but make sure you at least do a 10% water change. And then when you're done with the medication, do one last 10% water change. Um, and, you know, you should know, make sure that the temperature is almost, a, you know, a half a degree to a degree off. I mean, make sure it's right there. Uh, you know, just watch how you're, what you're replacing in the water, how you're replacing it, you know, uh, I wouldn't say that you got to remineralize your water, you know, uh, through this period. But if you go to remineralize it after, then just bring it back slow, a slow drip, you know, because you might lose maybe 5 to 10% TDS and then you can just bring it back or just put in whatever TDS your water is. Do that, and then every water change, bump it up, you know, five TDS to get it back to where you want it. Uh, so, yeah, the Pancure C, uh, you know, don't be afraid. Don't, don't, don't be afraid of the shrimp. Uh, you know, that's that's one of the biggest things. Please don't be afraid of it. I mean, they say, oh, well, the easiest ones for Neocaridina is the cherry shrimp. And the easiest ones in Caridina are crystal reds. Well... I don't, I don't go and go, oh, well, these orange eye blue tigers are way harder than a crystal red. I, I have more luck with the orange eye blue tigers. So, I mean, it, like I said, it's all up to you, what you want, uh, and stuff like that. 
So, uh, you know, and three uh, was feeding. Don't overfeed. Uh, try to crush your food up. Grind it up. Uh, grind it up in your fingertips. Grind it up in a little, like I have a coffee grinder. Put it in there. Dust it up. You know, maybe not a powder, but grind it up. Put it in your tank that way. Let it feed the whole tank instead of just a corner in these trays. I mean, they're super cute. Uh, I think that's the issue is, you know, I don't want to starve my tank or starve my shrimp for three, four days to put it in there and go, oh my gosh, look at them all. They're in the tray eating. It's so cute. No. So, I mean, I fell into it, bought all these feeding trays. Oh, yeah, it only goes one spot in the tank. Well, yeah, it goes in one spot if you're overfeeding. They're not going to eat it, and it'll sit in that tray, and you can get it out. Yeah, that's why they say, well, if they don't eat it all within an hour, take it out. Well, if they don't eat it all within an hour, you're overfeeding. That's why they're not eating it. So, in my opinion, I mean, I feed every other day now. That's my gig. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, uh, maybe the weekends. But Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll skip Saturday, Sunday, uh, and then I start again on Monday. And I only feed once a day. Uh, that was the other thing. I used to feed twice a day, thinking, oh, yeah, people are saying you don't feed twice a day. Well, no. I feed once a day. Like I said, I grind it up across the top of the water, let it sink. And all of my shrimp are the same size now, if, if not, you know, super close. I don't have, like, some straggling because they're so small they're not eating. You know, there's no fighting in the tank over food, you know, so on. And uh, just remember, uh, you know, it's slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race, you know. We all know the tortoise and the hare star story, you know. I grew up on it. Well, most of us. Uh, so, you know, just take your time. Take your time and enjoy uh, what's happening in your tank. Uh, let it bring you happiness. Bring your family happiness, friends. Uh, bring more people to the hobby. You know, just enjoy it. And, uh, you know, your outcomes will be great. You know, it's just a lot of fun. You know, and it's, you know, just remember also, it takes time. Everything takes time. And like I said, I'm, uh, I fail at that a lot because I want it now. I want that instant gratification. I want it now, 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 now. I want 800 babies in my tank. I want to be selling to everyone and always be able to fill an order. Well, it doesn't happen that way unless I import. I'm not big on importing. You know, I do import some stuff to bring in high quality shrimp. If they're super high quality, and then I breed those out. So, if I can bring, you know, a high quality shrimp from Taiwan to Michigan, breed it out, then start to sell them. I don't, I'm not big on, you know, I mean, I'm not saying I won't, but I'm not big on buying, you know, a thousand shrimp, bringing them here, and then selling them that way. No quarantine, no nothing, but I mean... You know, if, if things picked up like that, I'd have the two to choose from. I'd have the imports and I'd have the homebred. So, so anyways, thanks for your time. Uh, I don't want to, you know, take up any more of your time. But uh, <clears throat> I hope that uh, some of the tips I brought to you today, some strategies and some tools uh, are helpful. Thank you guys uh, for watching. Uh, we all enjoy it. We love that you guys, uh, tune in and watch our stuff. Makes us very happy that, you know, we can bring something to you. Uh, and, you know, it's actually hopefully entertaining to everybody and you like the content that we bring. Um, if there's anything else that you guys want to see, I mean, like I said, any questions I have, Caradinia. I have Neo Caradinia. I keep it, you know, I don't keep every shrimp, but I keep both. Caradinia and Neo Caradinia. So if there's something that you want to ask about, something that you'd like to know, substrates, uh, filters, you know, how much air do I run? Because I turned it all up now. Because before, I mean, my filter pads weren't even getting dirty. I'm like, what the heck? Because they. It just weren't, I didn't have the pole now that I put those big pumps on like that. I have two pumps running all this stuff. 
so I have a lot of backup, so I don't run out. So, you know, these 20 longs, you know, you need some movement. You know, that those are, you know, the vertical filters, but, I mean, you need to, I mean, it's, it's a lot. You need to move that water. You know, you need to pull it. These are 25-gallon, and those are, I think, rated at uh, 20 to 30-gallon tanks, but I have the... I have them pumping good to, to pull that stuff through. And I already see that the shrimp are, like, uh, in a lot of the tanks, they're on the filters. You know, eating, you know, biofilm and any food that's getting sucked to them now because, the you know, the filter's actually doing its job and it's just not sitting there letting out a couple bubbles. So, but okay. Uh, if you guys uh, need anything, any questions, uh, just ask. Um... And if you need anything, if you'd like to order anything, uh, send me a message and uh, we'll see what we can do. All right. I thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, I'll see you next time and uh, happy shrimp keeping. All right. Bye.